Chris Brent presents Fun with Tagging. And put those spray cans away because it's not going to be that much fun, but it will be fun. And I do strongly recommend that you draw this diagram out because we're going to be doing some two-way route redistribution here and writing a couple of route maps that have very similar names just to make it a little more difficult. Uh, so you definitely might want to write this out now. Now, uh, I know I mentioned at the end of the previous video we we're going to use the same setup as we did in the previous lab, and that's not quite the case. You can see the topology is the same, but there's one addressing change between routers 1 and 3. That link is now 199.12.13.0/24, and I've also added router 3's loopback. I just did that, uh, network 3333, uh, or interface IP address 3333, that is. And we're going to be working with redistribution with that interface as well. So right now, Router 1 should have three routes in its RIP table, networks 222 and 222, from Router 2. And it should also see Router 3's loopback. And by an amazing coincidence, I just happen to have that information right here. And you can see that we do see the routes from Router 2 in our RIP table on Router 1, and we see Router 3's loopback in OSPF as well. Now, with this tagging, what we're going to do is do some two-way route redistribution, what I call single-point two-way route redistribution, meaning I'm only doing it at one place between the two domains. Because in this particular topology, that's the only option I have. Now, what we want to do with route redistribution, one great way to avoid any routing link issue is to make sure that we don't take routes from one protocol, put them in the other protocol, and then put them back in the original protocol. And by that I mean here, we don't want to take these routes on Router 2, redistribute them into OSPF, and then somehow one of the OSPF routers sends them back over to the RIP domain. And the, the larger the network gets, the larger the chance of that happening. Now, to, to be blunt here, as I always am, with a single point of two-way route redistribution, routing loops theoretically can happen, but you're not going to see them terribly often. What you have to worry about is when you have multiple points of two-way route redistribution. Let's say that I had three routers connecting my RIP domain and my OSPF domain. That is, three different routers had interfaces in both those domains, and they're all doing route redistribution. That is one great way or great example of where tagging really comes in handy. The reason we're not doing that is it is more IE level and we have to stop somewhere. So we're going to stick with this one way, excuse me, one point of two-way route redistribution. Also, tagging is one of these skills. It's kind of like access lists back in your CCNA studies. And those of you who got your NA with me, you know I was saying, hey, you got to learn these things because it's a lot more, there's a lot more to ACLs than denying and permitting traffic. And those who took that advice got way ahead of the game because, of course, as you've learned since then, we use ACLs for all kinds of things. And what you're going to find, the same is true for tagging because there are so many values you can set with tags. We'll see those in iOS help. But again, this is a skill where you might look at it the first time and think, eh, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll learn it for the exam and then I'll probably never use it again. My guess is you will use it again. So what we're going to do first off We've already checked the routes, and we're going to write a route map that during route redistribution from RIP to OSPF, what's going to happen is the, these routes are going to be tagged with the number 10. You can choose any number you want, and as you're going to see, iOS help gives you quite the range of numbers. <laughs> it's like 12 digits, 15 digits, something like that. Uh, I wouldn't get too complicated with the tagging, just keep the numbers simple and I think you'll be much happier. So let's go ahead and write that route map first. And one of the several reasons I really love this lab is it gets you used to the fact that route map clauses are not always going to be match set, match set, match set. And here in this lab, you're going to see several route map clauses that either just have a match statement in it or just a set statement in it. So let's go ahead and dive right in here. And it looks like my rack drank its Slurpee a little too fast because we had a little brain freeze there. Let's go ahead and try that route map again. There we go. Now, for the route map, yeah, it's going to let you call it anything you want to. If you want to call it Signal or Texaco or Budweiser or whatever you want, um, I wouldn't recommend Budweiser. But the thing is, keep it intuitive. You Because when you get a lot of route maps on your router or someone else does, you know, and you're coming in behind them, 
you don't want to look at a route map and say, gee, I wonder what this person was trying to accomplish with this. If, if I have a route map called RIP to OSPF or Redis RIP to OSPF, then you've got an idea just by looking at the title of what the heck is going on. I'm going to do RIP to OSPF, and I'm going to do a permit 10, and I don't need a match statement because I want this to apply to all routes that we're redistributing from RIP to OSPF. So let's go ahead and just do a set tag 10. That's it. That's all I need right now. I'm going to go to my OSPF config and redistribute RIP. That's where you put the route map in. And I definitely want my subnets as always. And just for fun, I want to show you that you can apply these to your connected subnet, your connected networks as well. Most of the time, there might be an exception. But there we've got redistribute RIP, redistribute connected, and I should be tagging all of those routes. So let's go to router three, run show IP route OSPF. And there we see the routes we expect to see. There's the connected network, 172.12.123.0. And we see those three loopbacks from router 2, two networks 222 and 222, all marked O, all marked E2. We see the usual administrative distance, 110. We see the seed metric, the default seed metric we expect to see of 20. And when it comes to the number 10, as in tagging the routes 10, we see nothing. So we need to look somewhere else, right? I know, I know, Captain Obvious. But what we need to do is use the extended version of show IP route and then actually put your network number in there. I only put 222 there. There we go. You want to put your, your exact subnet in there and it's going to tell you it's known via what, what the distance is, what the metric is. And of course, what we are most interested in right now is that tag of 10. We love to see that because now we know that our route map is indeed working. Let's go ahead and check our others. And you can see tag 10 right there. And you see tag 10 right there. So, so far, so good. Our tagging has been very successful. This is what we have. And now we know exactly where to see them with the extended show route command. I'm going, th I'm going past that quickly because we just saw that on the live equipment. Let's say, though, now we want to make sure that any of those routes that were just tagged 10 cannot be redistributed back into the RIP domain but we do want the other OSPF routes to go on over. Oh, okay, so now we need another route map on router one, and we're gonna call this one OSPF to rep. And here though, I wanna put a deny, because again, I'm not gonna need a match and a set statement. I'm not setting any values. What I'm doing is saying, okay, I'm looking for a tag of 10, and when I see it, I want the route map to deny its redistribution. So I'm gonna do a deny 10 here, and the only thing I'm doing is matching. And what am I matching on? I'm matching on the tag, and I'm matching on 10. Again, I would not go, how many is that? Three, six, nine, okay, just 10. It looked like 15. Uh, let's go with match tag 10 there. Now I also want to permit everything else, all the other routes that aren't tagged 10. Route map OSPF to rip, permit 20, set tag 20. So what this is going to do, again, and I know I'm hitting you over the head with it, but for good reason, believe me, is that I'm going to stop the routes that are tag 10 from going back from OSPF back to RIP, that is. And all the other routes are going to be tagged with 20. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And here I need to go into router RIP, and it's router, excuse me, redistribute OSPF1, because you got to put the uh, process number there. And I want route map and I want OSPF to RIP, and I say that that way because that's what you gotta watch when you're doing two-way route redistribution and writing some route maps. And do I really need anything else? I do need a metric because we're going into RIP. 
Now let's try redistribute connected route map OSPF to rep metric 2. And here you're going to get a little message that tells you OSPF to rip used as redistribute connected into rip route map, tag match not supported. So you have to watch this because you'll get this message once in a while when you're going from OSPF to rip. That's really the only time I've seen it, or excuse me, going from connected into rip. It's not something I expect to, for, to pop them on your exam in any way, shape, or form, but I do want you to see that here live before we see it in the field live. So, so far so good. It looks like everything should be fine. And what now, there's something I, I wanted to show you before we did the redistribute, but that's okay. It's always a good idea to eyeball your route maps. And you can do that with the eyeball route map command. Nope, just kidding, it's show route map. And this is gonna show you your different route maps that you've written. This shows us RIP to OSPF and OSPF to RIP. And it's gonna show you what the sequence number is, whether it's a permit or deny, what the match and set clause of each individual route map sequence is. Uh, and then a little something called policy routing matches. We're not concerned with that as much right now as we are with that tag 20. So we're at the 11 minute mark. I'm gonna stop the video here. We're gonna pick up right here on the very next one and we'll finish our route map. See you there.